What's up, guys? I hope you're ready for Bible study. I know that I am. Uh, I uh, really excited about tonight's Bible study. Uh, glad you guys are joining us. If you are new here, we do this every single Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We usually start the teaching portion at around the five minute mark. So, yeah, super excited about tonight. Um, yeah, so if you guys are just hopping on, love you guys. I have missed you guys. Uh, yeah, so excited about tonight. We're going to get started here in about maybe maybe three or four minutes, something like that. So really pumped. Just as FYI, <clears throat> we do this every single Monday, 7 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. If you guys can hear me, uh, make sure to put a thumbs up in the comments, smiley face, whatever, just to let me know you can hear me. Now, tonight I'm coming to you from the war room, uh, which is our prayer room. Really excited about that. Um, but I know the Wi-Fi signal is not the best here. So um, I'm really, really hoping and praying in Jesus' name that everything is clear, you can hear me, um, and then it doesn't cut out. So if you guys, whenever we pray here in just two or three minutes, would pray with me that we don't have any signal issues, that would be incredible. So guys, tonight we are going to talk about uh, several things. Um, really excited. We're going to wait till about 10 more or so people hop on. We usually have about 20 or 30. Um, but yeah, so uh, we did a three, for those of you who are new here, we've been doing a series on uh, the end times. We've been doing a series on kind of going through what's going to happen in the end times. We're at the tail end of that right now. We're going to be talking about the Battle of Armageddon. Um, we're going to be ta talking about hell. We're also going to be talking about um, when Jesus comes in and basically obliterates uh, Satan and his army. So really excited about tonight's Bible study. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, if you guys can hear me, I'm going to check real quick and see if you guys can hear me. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Dead gummit. That's not what I wanted. Anyways, well, I hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to get started here in just two or three minutes. Uh, what I want you guys to do is go ahead and share this. Go ahead and invite uh, as many people as you can. Um, tonight is going to be, like I said, very, very, very interesting. We're going to be going to the Battle of Armageddon. Um, let's see. Make sure you guys can hear me. I don't know how to go back after I turn this off. Uh, let's check it out. Uh, well, uh, I guess I hope you can. Well, anyways, so... Um, yeah, so uh, really excited. Uh, if you guys uh, need anything prayer-wise, don't be afraid to drop in the comments. We have a great group of people here that will pray for you without a shadow of a doubt. So if you need prayer for healing, if you need prayer for, it doesn't matter if it's back pain, doesn't matter if it's a family situation, it doesn't matter if it's depression, it doesn't matter. Make sure to put it in the comments. You have a great group of people that are willing and here to pray for you. Um, so I know tonight's going to get a little bit touchy on the topic. So, uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, um, those of you who are just hopping on, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Those of you just hopping on, if you can hear me, make sure to put a thumbs up and I love you guys. Put your comments down below, prayer requests down below, because we will pray for you. God does incredible miracles all the time. Um, if you want to catch up to where we are in the series, you need to go back and watch watch parts one and two. We are on part three of our Armageddon series. Last uh, last week, we uh, kind of diverted. God kind of put something on my heart to talk about, and that was about hope. Uh, but tonight, we're going to pick right back up where we were uh, from our series. So guys, let's go ahead and go into prayer. Like I said, if you have prayer requests, put them in the comments. If you can hear me, throw a thumbs up. Um, I love you guys. You're incredible. I hope that God's blessing you today. And I hope that even if you're going through a trial, even if you're going through a struggle, that God is showing you the way out. And if he hasn't shown you the way out, don't doubt. Just have faith that it's coming. So let's go ahead and say a prayer. If you guys would pray for me. One thing I need prayer for, for sure, um, is guidance. So I have a situation where I am buying a piece of property uh, to do some business expansion on. And I've been praying about when to purchase this property um, and the amount that needs to be uh, offered in order for the guy to accept. So if you guys wouldn't mind praying that I get that answer pretty soon, I uh, felt like I've got it. Um, I felt like I've got it, uh, but you know, hey, another confirmation wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, also pray that uh, all the Wi-Fi, all the services, uh, you know, great. You guys can hear me. Pray for the audio. Pray for the video because I'm in a different location at night teaching. So let's go ahead and pray. 
Pray with me. Lord, I rebuke and bind anything coming against us in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you, you would sit your throne in this Bible study, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you would send ministering angels to minister to each and every person that's in this Bible study. Lord, we come against any distractions right now in Jesus' name. Lord, if there are screaming kids in the background, Lord, I pray that you would calm, you, you would calm them down. Lord, I pray that if there are work distractions that are on our mind, Lord, I pray that just for a brief moment, you would be able to grab our attention enough to stop worrying about those things. Because <clears throat> even in your word, you said, don't worry about tomorrow because today has enough trouble for itself, God. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us. I pray you guide us, Lord. I pray you would continue to watch over us. I plead the blood of Jesus over every person that's in this Bible study. We rebuke and bind sickness. We rebuke and bind insecurities, God. And we loose your peace, love, and joy to hit us from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so <clears throat> let's go into it real quick. We're going to recap where we were last time. Uh, we talked about the Great Tribulation. We're going to go over some events that led up to where we're going to talk about tonight, which is the Battle of Armageddon. So I'm just going to real quickly go through these. Um, that way that I can catch some new people up for tonight. We've been talking about the end times, okay? So um, <clears throat> here's, some, here's some events that happened uh, uh, during the... Um, Great Tribulation. Uh, God opens seals up, okay? He opens seals. You can read this in Revelation 6, 8. Excuse me, Revelation 6, also uh, chapter 8 and 7. Uh, the seals will describe the following events. Basically, an evil leader, an evil leader who's usually called the Antichrist, is going to win the world to himself. A terrible war is going to come, followed by famine, followed by death. Um, a fourth of the world's population is going to die, which is insane because we've got, I think, seven or eight billion people right now on the earth. Um, so anyways, there's going to be a lot of per persecution of the people who are turning to God during this time. Uh, there's going to be catastrophic earthquakes. Um, the, the, it says the moon will become uh, as blood and people will hide for them, uh, hide in the mountains as a fear. Then the trumpets are going to sound. That's Revelation 8 and 9. So during these judgments, um, a hail will fall, fire will burn over one-third of the earth, and a falling meteor will destroy one-third of the shipping uh, in, in general. It's just very interesting. Uh, all of the fish of uh, the sea will die. One-third of the sea will become blood. Poisons will contaminate one-third of the water supply. Many are going to die. Great darkness is going to come over the earth. Um, and for five months, scorpions will sting the earth, excuse me, will sting people on the earth. Um, and also, interestingly enough, it says a 200,000, uh, uh, I believe it's a 200 or a 2 million uh, man army will kill one third of the population. Uh, and then you have the vials, okay, the vials that are poured out. And once again, we're just recapping what we've been talking about. Um, the vials represents God's final judgments for the tribulation. Tribulation. These awful sores are going to be uh, 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 given to people uh, who are defying God, um, and the mar and those with the mark of the beast who follow the Antichrist. Uh, everything in the ocean is going to die. Um, the water will become blood. The sun, anyways, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Honestly, guys, I don't want to be a part of that. Um, in fact, you know, a lot of people have different. Um, a lot of people have different opinions on whether <clears throat> the rapture is going to be pre-tribulation, post-tribulation, or mid-tribulation. Now, I used to be really post-tribulation. I used to believe that we're going to have to endure all these things, and then God's going to come back. I don't believe that now. I've done a lot of studying, a lot of reading, a lot of praying. I believe we're very pre-trib. But once again, everybody's got a different opinion on that. So let's go into what we're going to talk about tonight, which is the Battle of Armageddon. Um, so basically, um, Armageddon is located, it's, it's called the Valley of Jezreel and it's located west of the Jordan river and east of the Mediterranean sea. Um, and the battle of Armageddon is going to be fought in this area. And in fact, the name Armageddon is actually taken from a strategic military city of, it's called Megi, uh, excuse me, Megiddo. And which is basically, uh, was, a back in the days of Solomon was a fortified chariot city. Um, so it's basically going to be the, the, a lot of people, uh, look at this, the battle of Armageddon, Armageddon and say, it's going to be the greatest bloodbath that the world has ever seen. I mean, it's basically the Jews, God's chosen people against the antichrist and the rest of the world. I mean, I imagine we're going to have, uh, uh bio weapons. I imagine there are going to be nukes. I imagine there are going to be a whole bunch of ridiculous things that happen in this war. It's supposed to be the worst ever in human history. Um, then what happened, I'll give you a brief overview and then we're going to go into depth. 
Um, so then there's 144,000 sealed uh, uh, people that will be saved. Now, here's the thing. The, the rapture, when the rapture happens, okay, as Christians, that is our only opportunity to be saved. There is no second chance for us, okay? Let me kind of go into that. The, the, um, we've talked a lot over the last few weeks about being ready for the coming of God. You know, are our hearts ready? Are, are, are we taking the necessary steps to make sure that we are um, solid in our walk with God? Because the rapture is the only opportunity that we have to make it to heaven. At the end of the Great Tribulation, which is a seven-year period, 144,000 Jews who have converted to from Judaism, um, uh, in, in a nutshell, into believing that Jesus was Messiah will be saved. But that's it. So we've got one shot at this. That is it. Um, the 144,000 are saved after the rapture um, happens. So let's let's talk about the preparation for Armageddon. Okay. So. There's going to be, obviously, we've, we've talked about the mark of the beast, okay? We've talked about um, the Antichrist, okay? We've talked about all these, um, all these big figures, right? So the Jews are going to be kind of a thorn in the side of this uh, Antichrist and uh, the false prophet. Uh, he's going to be able to, and this guy, whoever he is, he's going to be able to break through to all the other nations, but not theirs, um, he's, he's, he's basically going to be determined to destroy them. I'm going to read a lot of scripture tonight because I want to tie all this together for us tonight uh, as we end this series. So Revelation 19, 19, and, uh, it says, and I saw the beast and the Kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the white horse, excuse me, that sat on the horse and against his army. It says, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth under the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them and the bat, uh, to battle, excuse me, to gather them to the battle of that great day of the, uh, uh, the great day of God Almighty. And it says, and he gathered them together in a place called Hebrew tongue, in the Hebrew tongue called Armageddon. That's Revelation 16, uh, verse 13, 14, and 16. So the Ar Armageddon is this final war between Satan um, and, and God. That's just what it comes down to. Now, we already know God, won hey guys, please don't try to screen share me. Or join in right now. I'm getting a bunch of notifications of people who want to pop on the screen with me. Just please don't. Um, anyways, so basically this battle of Armageddon is the last big war between uh, 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 Satan and the people who he has coerced into being his army in a nutshell or um, uh, cause them to fear and be a, become a part of his army and God's army. It's going to end the Great Tribulation, okay? So we, they, they go through all this tribulation, which is a really, really, really sucks, and then this war ends absolutely everything. And then after that, uh, Jesus will set up his millennial reign, basically a millennial thousand years. He's going to set up his thousand-year reign on the earth. Um, I'm going to read some more scripture to you. It says, And I saw heaven opened. This is Revelation 19, 11, 14, and 16. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he sat upon him, which was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And the armies which are in heaven followed upon him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And he had on his vesture of, uh, of his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of of lords. Obviously, we're talking about Jesus. Jesus will come with his church to the end to reign and destroy the beast and his world system. Um, then, after uh, God's army completely obliterates Satan's army, um, the judgment happens of the beast and the false prophet. Okay, so they, in a nutshell, they get thrown into the lake of fire and, and Satan gets chained up. Uh, for a brief time, because he's let he's let out again after this thousand year reign to try to deceive um, the new nation, and we're going to go into that here in a second. So, 
Um, yeah, we're going to go into that in just a minute. So let's uh, let's go to the return of Christ. Uh, I'm going to read some stuff for, uh, for you. Zechariah 14, verse 4. 14, verse 4. And it says, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is therefore Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and then toward the west, and there should be a great valley. So Jesus comes with his people, uh, with the angels, destroys uh, Satan, uh, destroys the uh, the Antichrist system, if you will, and then he's going to stand on the Mount of Olives. And then there's going to be a thousand-year reign of God's people, um, yeah, uh, basically of God's people. Uh, so let's kind of go into what that thousand-year reign is going to look like. Hey, if you guys can still hear me and the signal's still good, can you give me a thumbs up just to kind of let me know? Thanks. Um, I'm teaching at a different location, so like I said, I know the signal's not the best. Um, so let's kind of let's go over uh, what this thousand-year reign is going to look like. Okay, so Jesus Christ is going to be the King of the Earth, and it says in Zechariah 14 verse 9, it says, "And the Lord shall be King over all the earth, and in that day there shall be one Lord." And his name, one. They're not looking for three. They're looking for one. Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. Um, he will rule on earth for a thousand years. And I'm going to read another scripture to you. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Now, I, I don't know if you know this, but the word rapture is not actually in the Bible. Rapture is a term that was adopted by Christianity to, to explain the catching away or the catching up of, this, of, of saved people, right? These people who are going to be saved um, have to have certain attributes in order to be saved. We've talked about this a million times, right? Jesus lays it out. Jesus says himself, we have to be baptized in the water. We have to be baptized in the Spirit. Otherwise, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You can read that. It's in John 3. Um, and then um, we also have to walk daily. We have to be filled with the Spirit of God. Peter said that we have to be bad, we have to repent, which is number one, that's turning away from sin, right? The people who are going to make it in the rapture are the people who have repented, which are the folks who have turned away from sin. That means that they have left their old life behind and they have walked in their new life with Christ, right? They've set down their struggles. They've set down, and I know you guys are going, oh, everybody struggles. You're right. There's a difference in between accidentally messing up and 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 choosing willfully to mess up over and over and over again and using God's forgiveness as some sort of credit card. Right. So there's a difference in the heart there. Um, so repentance is turning away from sin. And then we've got. Um, Sorry, we've got uh, we have to be baptized uh, in water in the name of Jesus. It specifies that <clears throat> I can't stand when people say that baptism is just a public profession of your faith. Do you understand that nowhere in the Bible it says that that is false? That is not true whatsoever. You cannot find it in the Bible. It does not exist. Baptism is an absolute necessity for salvation. Jesus specifies it. Peter actually repeats it. Day of Pentecost, a whole nine yards. And then we had to be filled with the Spirit of God, which is the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We've talked about this in the past. If you have questions on it, go back and watch some of the Bible studies we've had. So these people are raptured up, right? They're raptured up, and that's what he's talking about here. Is is he says, Blessed and holy is is he that is part of the first resurrection. That's the only chance that we get, is that first resurrection. It says, on such the second death which is basically judgment thrown in, a, thrown in a, the lake of fire. They shall be the priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So in that thousand year reign, the folks who are raptured will rule, um, basically will rule with Christ in this millennium, in this new era that's set up. So basically there's going to be a hierarchy in this new um, millennium, in this thousand year reign. And the hierarchy, where you stand, if you're baptized in Jesus' name, you're repenting, you've turned away from sin, you're doing your very best every single day to walk with God, you, you've been filled with the Spirit of God, you're, you, you're, you're, you qualify for the rapture, and you have to walk daily, obviously. And then, and then what you do on this earth, what you do on this earth is going to, to set your level of what kind of authority you have 
in that thousand year reign. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. Okay. So say somebody who maybe is really nervous in their walk with God. They only reach out to maybe one or two people a month. You know, they're not really being the Christian that we need to be. And what I mean by that is they're, they're not actively on a daily basis, reaching out to people, praying for people, all those things. They may be a farmer. I'm not saying there's anything bad about farmers, but I'm just saying that there is going to be a hierarchy. And then you have somebody who maybe, maybe um, is, is, he sacrifices on a daily basis. He reads, he prays, um, uh, he's, he's stepping out on faith. This person may be a judge or may be a priest. And then you maybe have somebody who's kind of in the middle who, who um, you know, you know, you get my point. There's going to be a hierarchy. And this is not me talking here. This is just me trying to explain what the Bible talks about. There will be a hierarchy in heaven, and it's going to be based off of where we where we are at in the earth right now. Um, so Matthew 25, verse 31 through 46, basically is the, is, is the judgment of all nations. And it says the nations of the world have been blessed or persecuted. Excuse me. The nations of the world that have blessed or persecuted the Jews especially during the, the tribulation, will be judged at this time. Then, like I said, God's, God's people are going to rule with Christ. Uh, some good scriptural references for that are Zechariah 9, verse 11 through 17, uh, 12, verse 10 through 14, 13, verse 1, then Luke 19, 19, and Revelation 20, verse 1 through 6. Now, in this new millennium, there's going to be a capital, okay? It's and I imagine, I imagine it's going to be set up just like a city. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I imagine it's going to be set up like a city um, because it says the capital is going to be Jerusalem. And then, interestingly enough, it says the nations will come there annually to worship the Lord, and that's Zechariah fourteen verse sixteen through seventeen. So I imagine. Um, anyway, so Satan's going to be bound during this time, and that's Revelation twenty verse two through three. So let's talk about the great white throne of judgment. What is the great white throne of judgment? What does it look like? It's obviously great and it's obviously white. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but let's talk about what this is. It says after 1,000 years, um, and I, I want to preface this. I, I want to I preface this. Whenever we die, okay, whenever we die, we are going to go um, to one of two places. That's heaven or that's hell. Um, so I want to preface that before we start talking about the great right throne of judgment. Um, so, uh, after 1000 years of reign, um, uh, of Jesus basically being on the earth, the great white throne of judgment is going to take place and it's going to be uh, a judgment from all of the dead at the beginning of human existence from the very, from, from, from Adam and Eve all the way up to Bob and Steve, you know, I don't know, you know, whatever, you know. Anyways, <laughs> everybody who ever existed, um, yeah, the only people who will not be judged during this time are the redeemed people. These people who, uh, both dead or living, that arose to meet the Lord at the rapture. Um, it says in, in Revelation verse 20, um, 11 and 12, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, uh, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. Okay, um, so obviously we have three parts to this. We have the throne, okay, which John saw this impressive, super big, super white throne. Um, the judge, Jesus Christ, who is going to sit upon the throne, and the judged. Um, it says basically the dead from all walks of life. Revelation 20 and 13 says, And the sea gave up the dead and those that were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. So basically you have, if you die, you don't make it, you go to hell. And, and you're in hell in a nutshell until the end of this thousand year reign. Uh, because it says in Revelation 20 and 13, and the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and the death and hell delivered the dead that were in them. So I want to talk just real quick. I've been I've been reading this book, and I want to read this excerpt out of this book to you, um, because I'm in this portion of this book, 
and um, it, it, the, the chapter is called Do Good People Go to Hell? And it's very, very, very interesting um, because hell's kind of like a taboo thing we don't like to talk about. I, I think a lot of us have this mentality that, you know, you know, I'm not going to make it. I'm a good person or, you know, whatever the case may be. But but what I want to do is I want to read an excerpt out of this. And, and, and whether you believe the story or not, the principle still reigns true. The, the, the book is called 23 Minutes of uh, 23 Minutes in Hell. And it's about this guy who went through an experience and, and the Lord basically brought him down to hell and showed him and he got to experience lots of things that were in hell. And it was not good. The, 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 the book is, the book is, phew, you want to turn your life around, it's a great book to read. Or if you just want to, just are just curious, just curious, take a gander. Um, once again, whether you believe the guy or not, that's that's irrelevant. But what he says in here, and this is what I'm about to read you, is true. And it's biblically backed. So I'm just going to read this excerpt to you because it made me think quite a bit about my actions. And it made me, made me think quite a bit about... Um, who I want to be. So I'm going to read this to you guys real quick. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right. So, and this is uh, page 75. It says, most of us realize that we have broken God's law, the Ten Commandments, but it's no big deal. Now he's going through, he's going through our version of perception of breaking God's law. That's what he's talking about. He's trying to, he's trying to get through to us that, that this is the way that the majority of the world looks at sin. And this is the way that the majority of the world looks at actions that we take. <clears throat> it says, most of us realize that we have broken God's law, the Ten Commandments. But it's no big deal. So let me ask you a few questions about the law, uh, about the law you have broken. And let's just see if it's a big deal. Okay? This is good, guys. And, and, and oh, this is good. Have you ever lied? Obviously, we have to say yes. Um, but, but, but they're only white lies. They were nothing serious. Sound familiar? Have you ever stolen anything? You say yes, but only the little things. Only little things. By the way, the Bible talks about being a thief. Um, the Bible talks about being a thief. Do you realize that you can be a thief without actually taking something physical from somebody? The Bible says, the Bible says not to be a thief, but see, here's the thing. When we have bad attitudes and we holler and we yell at people and, and, and we, you know, are just negative in our entire day and we pour that onto other people, we can be a thief by taking somebody else's joy. We can be a thief by, by default, by who we're affecting around us. Mm. Boss at work, person who consistently gossips. Get my point? All right. So, uh, have you ever stolen the little things? Uh, yeah, but only, uh, have you ever stolen anything? Yes, but only little things. So can you see what you're doing? You're trivializing your crimes. And, and, and he talked about a guy named Danny. He gave a really good example. It says, you will deceive yourself. He says, what you're doing is you're saying that you haven't actually sinned. But the Bible warns, he who says he has no sin deceives himself. The truth is, if you've lied, then you're a liar. He said, if you've stolen anything, the value of the item is stolen is completely irrelevant. You are a thief. So what you need to hear is the judge's ruling for lying and the judge's ruling for stealing. Here it is, Revelation 21 and 8. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. All liars go to hell. You say, well, I don't believe in hell. Once again, I'm just reading this excerpt. It's really good, guys. I don't believe in hell. Well, that's like saying someone saying to a judge, well, I don't believe in jail. What we believe or don't believe doesn't change realities. No thief will enter heaven, not one. Now look at this. Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman and lusts for her has already committed adultery. Matthew 5 and 28. Have you ever looked at a woman or a man with lust? Then you've committed adultery. And as far as God is concerned... That's his opinion on it. Have you ever used God's name in vain? If you have, then, uh, you know, as a cuss word or whatever, that's called blasphemy. And it's very serious in God's sight. So if you're being honest enough to admit that you have broken those commandments, yourself, you, you, you are, we are self-admitted, lying, thieving, blasphemous, blasphemous adulterers at heart. 
And if God gives us just, justice on judgment day, you'll be guilty and end up in hell. So think about this right now. If you die, would you end up in heaven or hell? So what are you going to do to make this right between you and the law? See, the Bible says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to read one more. I'm going to read one more little scripture, one more little, uh, uh, so what are you going to do, right? Well, see, the Bible talks about repentance, right? Repentance is the turning away from sin, right? That, that's walking in a new walk. That's walking in a new life. That's saying, I'm sick and tired of my old life. I'm tired of looking at pornography. I'm tired of lying. I'm tired of cheating. I'm tired of drinking. I'm tired of smoking. I'm tired of being lazy. I'm tired of being... The, 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 the most negative person in the world with the negative out view and turning away from that and going in the opposite direction. That's the first step. Then we have to be baptized in the name of Jesus, right? Then it says for the remission of our sins. And then we have to be filled with the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in other tongues. So you can read this. It's in Acts chapter 2, John verse 3. These things are very, very real and very, very evident. So yes, if we were to be judged by the law, which... FYI, <laughs> those who are not baptized in Jesus' name, not filled with the Spirit, mm, Jesus, 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 and haven't repented, are going to fall under the judgment of the law. But once we've been baptized in the name of Jesus, we've received that Spirit of God by the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and we have repented, and we walk with God consistently on a daily basis, God sees us completely different. He doesn't see us as this terrible stain on existence. He sees us as renewed, revived. Now, once again, it says our righteousness is like filthy rags, right? Our righteousness is like filthy rags. But at the same time, we're, we're, we're reborn. We're now a son or a daughter in Christ rather than somebody just living for the world. And as we can see, somebody just living for the world is going to get judged by those standards. So let's, let's just keep on going with this. So, <clears throat> because a lot of people still don't get that, that this hell thing, right? You might, say, you might say, oh, how can a good and a loving God send somebody to a horrific place called hell? And, I, and by the way, now I'm on page 78. I'm reading an excerpt out of this book because I'm telling you, whether you believe this guy or not, th th what he's saying rings true. I mean, it's it's just, it, I really, really hope it's, ta I, I self-reflected when I read a lot of this. I really, really, really did. So you still may wonder how a good and loving God could send somebody to that horrific place called hell. He says, but to put it plainly, he doesn't. It's our rejection of the provision, Jesus who died on the cross for our sin, that sends us there. See, we all have free will. We all have free will. We all are going to choose to follow after Christ or choose to follow after the world. If you're baptized in Jesus' name, filled with his spirit, with evidence of speaking in other tongues, and you've repented, you're choosing to walk with Christ on a daily basis. But if not, we're choosing to walk with the world. Repent actually means to turn or change. In fact, here's an interesting fact. In the Australian Army, I don't know if you guys are any military folks out there. If you've got any military folks, I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Um, but, um, you, you know, in, in the United States military, whenever they turn around, they say about face, right? And they turn around. Actually, in the Australian Army, they actually use the word repent to turn around. Interesting fact. In Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, God says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Basically, what he's saying here is I've set before you options because you have free will. I've set before you to I've set before you the option of life or the option of death. I've set before you the option of blessing or the option of cursing. I love this, guys. At the end of it, he says, therefore, choose life. Ooh, Jesus. Therefore, choose life. What God wants each and every one of us to do is choose life. Choose to repent. Choose to start living for God. I mean, aren't you tired of being miserable? Man, choose life. Because Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. That's John 14 and 6. So 
Will you believe in Jesus or you reject him? Up to us. And this is the last part of this I'm going to read to you. It says, by choosing to do nothing, you've already made your choice. You choose death and hell forever. There are no fence positions with God. You're in or you're out. John 3.18, Jesus says, He who believes in me is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And then he follows up with it. He says, I am absolutely horrified at anybody who would be sent to hell. So I want you guys to really think about that. This is just a book that I'm reading right now. And, 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 and if you want to go in and read it, I'll show you. It's by Bill Weiss. It's called 23 Minutes in Hell. It is a very, very eye-opening book. Very, very eye And whether you believe his story, which, by the way, is pretty astounding, a lot of good points come from that book. A lot of really good points come from that book. So let's talk about a different book. Let's talk about the book of life. So in Revelation 20 and 12, okay, it says the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Okay, whether you believe it or not, I'm not saying your works can save you, but I'm saying that your works do position you for a higher level position in that thousand year reign. Like I said, the person who reaches out daily, the person who reads and studies and gets a really close relationship with God is going to have a higher position um, in this thousand-year reign. Um, so the books, basically what the books represent here, uh, the Bible, uh, which obviously reveals God's plan for humanity, uh, the recorded history of each person's life, and the book of life, which is the book of names of, of uh, the righteous, all ages, all it doesn't matter if you're black, white, Asian, doesn't matter. If you're in the book of life, you're in, you're, you're, you're solid. It says the saints uh, of the church will be present with Jesus during this. Um, it says those, who, those whose names are not in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. That's Revelation 20, verse 15. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this Bible study, throw a thumbs up in there. Don't forget to share this with somebody else because... We're coming to the tail end. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. We're coming to the tail end of really, really, really going um, into the end times. So let's talk about let's talk about when time ends. Talk about when time ends. This is eternity. And guys, I just, I'm going to share something a little bit personal with you. Um, eternity is something that I personally have a hard time understanding. And I think it's something that a lot of people have a hard time understanding because everything we do on a daily basis is based off of time. It's based off of, you know, schedules. I, you know, what am I going to do? I got to feed the kids, got to do all these things. But I want you to think about eternity real quick. You know, I don't know if you've ever been hurt or you've ever been burned or you've ever had a broken arm or whatever the case may be. I'm literally pleading with you guys, absolutely pleading with you guys, that if you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus, not his titles, not Father, Son, Holy Ghost, it's got to be in the name of Jesus. And we've done Bible studies on that. So if you're interested, you can go take a look at those. We've done several of them. You've, you've, you've been baptized in Jesus' name. You've repented. You've turned away from sin. Then I'm completely spaced out. I want to say this the right way. I just... Imagine the worst pain you've ever felt. I mean, ever felt. Whether it be depression, whether it be a physical pain, whatever. Magnify it times a thousand. And it never goes away. That's what hell is going to be like. Opposite is going to be heaven. Imagine the most incredible prayer meeting you've ever had in your entire life. The most incredible time God has ever come in and intervened. Magnify that times a thousand. That's what your future is going to look like. Eternity is forever. I don't know how to say it any other way. Like I've, I've, I've been trying to, to pray and to ask God, give me an understanding of what eternity is. Because I don't think we really take that into account. Because see, our wounds often heal. Anyways. Let's keep on going. 
So after the white throne of judgment, um, is it's not really described in a lot of detail. The Bible does give us a couple of insights that are pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to read a couple to you. Second Peter, verse 3 and 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. So basically, all of earth, all of space, Everything humans have sent to outer space, everything we've built on this earth is going to be completely burned up, completely destroyed. I don't know what this is going to look like, but it's going to be pretty interesting to watch. Revelation 21 and 1, and it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And interestingly enough, it says that there were no more, there was no more sea. And you know, this is pretty interesting because Jesus is also referred to as living water. So, <laughs> man, I could go in so much there. Okay, so 2 Peter 3.13, We, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, and dwelleth, uh, which dwelleth in much righteous, righteousness. That's just another uh, new heaven, new earth scripture, if you will. Um, you know, oh, man. Okay, I gotta finish up though. Um, let's talk about the New Jerusalem. Okay, we have a new heaven, we have a new earth. Let's talk about the New Jerusalem. Um, so John saw a beautiful city coming down from God. Uh, I'm gonna read this this account in which John watched this happen. Um, it says, "And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband." It's Revelation. 21 and 2. It says there will be a new heaven, a new earth, and a new city. Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. That's John 14, verse 2 through 3. Revelation kind of uses a really, really, really cool imagery um, of how big this thing is going to be and then what it's going to look like. Um, it's it, it basically, it, it gives length, breadth, and height. And that's in verse 16. It says it's made of pure gold, like clear glass, with walls of jasper, gates of pearl. Uh, that's verse 21. Uh, and it will not meet a power plant, a sun, or any moon to shine, because Jesus is going to be the light. And that basically time in a nutshell that's where time and eternity meet right time is going to be non-existent eternity is just going to be forever the temporal will cease and um yeah we're going to live with Jesus for the rest of our for the rest of our existence which is forever so guys i um really 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 hope you guys enjoyed this bible study um i love you guys i hope that I hope that um, I hope that you guys really um, at the end of every Bible study, I, I like to make sure that we all self reflect. You know, we don't do these Bible studies for fun. You know, this is not something that this is not something that's just something to do. Like we we do these Bible studies so that we can um, continue to spread the word and continue to gain knowledge and continue to grow in our walk with God. And my hope, my hope. Is that, is that through you guys watching and you guys reading and you guys praying and you guys seeking the will of God, that, that this is duplicated, that you guys continue uh, to grow your walk with God in reaching out to other people and in really seeking the face of God rather than you know worrying about every little thing that's going on during the day because God can work out lots of problems with us, even, with us not even worrying about them if we would just trust him. So I really hope that you guys start doing your own Bible studies and you start reading and you continue to pray and you continue to grow your walk with God. Next week, we're going to start a new series. Um, I am pretty excited about it. Um, but yeah, I, I love you guys. You guys are absolutely incredible. If you need anything prayer-wise, make sure to put it in the comments because we have a really good, people, a really good, good group of people here that will pray for you. And by the way, if somebody asks for a prayer request, for the love of God, do not leave them hanging. You know what? You know what hits my heart the most is whenever we hop off of Bible study and there are people that that say, I need prayer for this, this, and this, and this, and nobody comments. Guys, 
let's make sure that we are reading and we are praying for each and every need that comes through because this is a family. This is a family we've got here. So I love you guys. I hope you have an incredible day. Uh, find you a good church to go to. Find you a good apostolic church. I myself go to an apostolic Pentecostal church. Um, and, and, and really reach out, guys. And on a daily basis, use those opportunities to, to use the opportunities you have with just, you know, every day, meeting somebody in Walmart or meeting somebody in Goodwill or meeting somebody wherever, just to say that, just tell people, hey man, God loves you. Start somewhere. You're never, we're never going to get anywhere reaching people if we don't start somewhere. And don't let Satan, don't let Satan, let, 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 don't let Satan convince you that, that, that you're, that you're unworthy and all this stuff and all this mess. Don't, don't let Satan convince you of that. All right. Granted, we're not necessarily worthy, but what Satan can do is he can bring up our past. And, and if we let, if we let him, we can run with that and it can hinder our future. So I love you guys. I'm going to pray. If you guys would pray with me, that'd be incredible. Don't forget to share this video because guys, it's not for me. We don't get anything off doing these videos. We don't. I mean, well, that's not true. I'm not saying we don't get anything. Like we don't, um, the goal is to reach other people. So make sure to share this video. Uh, because you never know who else is going to help. So if you're interested in any other Bible studies we've done, you can go to our YouTube page at Seeking Truth Ministries, or you can just go take a look at my, my Facebook page. I literally, the only thing I post are Bible studies and biblical stuff. So I love you guys. I will see you next Monday, 7 p.m. sharp. Um, yeah, and hope you guys have an incredible night. Let's go ahead and pray. If you would pray with me, that'd be great. Lord, I rebuke and bind anything coming against us in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that we didn't take offense to the message, but Lord, I pray that we would take it to heart, Lord, and, and, and help us um, to continue to grow and continue to step out on, on, on faith, God. Lord, I pray that we would continue to um, reject anything, God, that comes against your perfect will. Lord, I rebuke and bind any spirit of infirmity, God. Lord, I pray you would heal each and every person, God, that's dealing with any sort of ailment, God, whether it be mental, physical, emotional, whatever the case may be. I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. You're incredible. I uh, will see you guys next Monday, 7 p.m. sharp. Y'all be good.